In today's video, I'm going to explain how an electroscope works. This is an electroscope. An electroscope is a device that is used to detect charged objects. This electroscope has four main parts. The first thing is this metal plate that's here at the top of the electroscope. The second part is this black metal bar which runs down the entire length of this electroscope. Then, of course, we have the pivot point, which is right here, and then we have the pointer. The pointer will move like this when we bring a charged object close to the electroscope. Now, in this video, I'm going to first show you and then explain four different cases. First, I'll show them to you here, and then the second part of the video, I'll explain how the electroscope works and why it does what it does. The first case I'm going to show you is this. I have this plastic stick. This plastic stick has been laying around for a while. It is not charged. When I bring this plastic stick close to the electroscope and even touch the electroscope, why does the pointer not move? That is very interesting. That is case number one. Case number two is I'm going to take this stick and I have a piece of wool here and I am going to charge this plastic stick. I'm going to rub the stick with the wool and when I rub the stick with the wool, I give the stick a negative charge. Now I have a charged object. I'm going to bring that close to the plate of the electroscope. I'm not going to touch it and you will notice that the pointer starts to move. That is case number two. Bring a charged object close to the electroscope. Don't touch the electroscope. Why does the pointer move like that? Case number three is then when I remove the stick, then the electroscope and the pointer goes back to its original position. Okay, so let's just review that one more time. Case two is bring a charged object close and the pointer moves. Take the charged object away and the pointer goes back to its original position. Now what I'm gonna do for case number four is I'm gonna take the charged object, give it a nice charge like that, and then I'm actually gonna touch the metal plate. I'm gonna bring it close, I'm gonna touch the metal plate, and you can see when I touch the metal plate, the pointer moves out like that, and then when I take the stick away, the pointer stays in its position like that. And why does the pointer stay now in its position like that when I take the charged object away? So those are the four cases that we're gonna explain in the next part of the video, and stay tuned so you can see how the electroscope works. This is part two of our video entitled Charge Separation and the Electroscope. And as we showed in the previous part of the video, we're going to be talking about how the electroscope works when we have a negatively charged stick. Now let's just do a quick review. This is the electroscope. The electroscope is a device that is used to detect charged objects. And the electroscope, as we said before, has four main parts. There's the metal plate at the top. There's the bar which runs all the way through the electroscope. There's the pivot and there is the pointer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show you again the four cases. I'm going to go through an explanation of each of the four I showed you in the first part of the video. The first one was when we bring a neutral stick, it's moved close to the top plate of the electroscope. Case number two is a negatively charged stick is moved close to the plate of the electroscope but doesn't touch it. Case number three is when that same negatively charged stick is then moved away from the plate at the top of the electroscope. And then case number four is we take that negatively charged stick and we actually touch the top plate of the electroscope and then the stick is moved away from the electroscope. Why do the things happen that we see with the electroscope and the negatively charged stick? So here's our electroscope. The first case is a neutral stick is moved close to the plate electroscope. Now I want to point out this is the electroscope. The electroscope as I drew it has four, no, 14, has 18 positive and 18 negative charges. That means that the electroscope has a net charge of zero. It has the same number of positive and negative charges and it has a net charge of zero. We're going to bring the neutral stick close to the electroscope. Now on the neutral stick, I drew on here seven positive and seven negative. It doesn't really matter how many you draw, but we said the stick is neutral, it has a net charge of zero, so it has to have the same number of positive and negative charges. When we bring a neutral object close to the electroscope, nothing happens. Bummer. Why does nothing happen? Because the stick is not charged. The electroscope is designed to show when you have a charged object close to the electroscope, and nothing happens because there is no charge separation. No charge stick, no charge separation, and nothing happens at all, just like that. The electroscope stays as it was in the original position. 
Now, in number two, case number two, we have a negatively charged stick, and we're going to bring that close to the electroscope, but we're not going to touch it. I want to point out once again at the beginning here that the electroscope still has a net charge of zero. It's neutral because it has the same number of positive and negative charges, but we're going to bring a negatively charged stick, which we rub the stick with the wool. We gave it a negative charge. We added negative charges to the stick, and therefore, the net charge of the stick is negative because it has more negative charges than positive charges. And let's just point out again that the stick is not touching the electroscope. When we bring the negatively charged stick close to the electroscope but don't touch it, then the negative stick is going to repel the negative charges or the electrons in the electroscope, just like that. And you can see those electric charges, those negative charges are moved down to the bottom half of the electroscope. But I want to point out again that the positive charges do not move. Some people think, oh, we have a negative stick. The positive charges move up. The negative charges move down. That is not the case. The positive charges are like the nuclei in the atoms. They're stuck inside the atoms. They cannot move. They stay where they are. But the negative charges move down like that. Now you'll notice we have the top half of the electroscope, which is really positively charged. We have the bottom half of the electroscope, which is negatively charged. We have the pivot here. We have the pointer. And when we have two negatively charged objects, they are going to repel each other, and the pointer moves out like that, just like we saw in the first part of the video. But please remember that the electroscope still has an overall neutral charge, a net charge of zero. We did not add or take any charges away from the electroscope. We simply moved some of the charges, separated some of the charges, polarized that object by taking those electro electrons and moving them down by bringing the negative stick close to it, and it forces them, pushes them down to the bottom half of the electroscope. Now, we're going to take the stick away. We're simply going to remove the stick. That's case number three. Remove the stick, and when we move the stick, those negative electrons, those negative charges which were down here in the bottom half of the electroscope, they go back to where they were before. And therefore, the overall charge is still neutral, net charge of zero of the electroscope. The bottom half and the top half, the pointer, the bar, the plate, everything has even charge distribution. And therefore, there is no force of repulsion between the pointer and the metal bar. Okay? All the charges just go back to where they originally were. That's the same picture we had in case number one. Now, in case number four, we are going to take the negatively charged stick and we're not only going to bring it close to the metal plate, we're going to touch the metal plate. Isn't that interesting? Remember, the stick is negative because we rubbed it with the wool. It has more negative charges than positive charges. The stick has an overall net charge that is negative. When we touch the stick to the metal plate, we allow the excess electrons from the um, stick to go over to the electron, to, to, excuse me, to the electroscope. Now we're adding negative charges to the electroscope. And when we add negative charges, we have excess charge and the entire electroscope has an overall charge that is negative. The whole thing is charged. Remember in case number two, we just pushed them down, but the whole char overall charge was zero. Now we've added charges to the electroscope, and the overall charge on the electroscope is negative. We put more electrons onto the electroscope, and it has a net charge, a negative net charge, because now on the entire electroscope, as you can see, there are more negative charges than positive charges. And now, once again, the bottom, the whole thing, but the bottom also has a negative charge. And the pointer and the bar are both negative, and they repel each other like that, and the pointer goes out. Now, one of the most interesting things, of course, is when I take the stick away, okay, I remove the stick, and you can see now we left the negative charges behind. Okay, those excess charges, they stay on the electroscope. And the overall charge on the entire electroscope is still negative. The pointer is negative. The bar is negative. 
The electroscope has more negative pos uh, charges than positive charges, and therefore that pointer stays out, pointed like that in that position, even after we took the stick away. So there you go. We went over first and showed you those four cases with an actual electroscope. And then the second part of this video, I explained why the electroscope does what it does in each of those four cases. So thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked that video, if you found it helpful, please do all of the following five things. Please subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science. Support our channel. Subscribe, click the notifications bell, give it a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive comment and don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.